Chris Tucker finally broke his silence on the reason why we haven't seen him in Hollywood as of late. In a recent interview with B103, Tucker would say that because he rose up so fast, he wanted to do more with his career and he thought the best way to do that was to step back and live life, then come back. Tucker's latest film, Air, is his first film since 2016, and because his latest few projects have been in the drama category, it appears that his long absence was due to career rebranding. Today we have our comedy hype analyst, Yamanika Saunders and Pierre, calling in the show along with very special guest, comedian Marvin Hunter, in studio to talk about Chris Tucker's absence in Hollywood and if it benefits him in the long run. But first, let's take a look at this clip. Chris, you had this amazing career. Uh, I remember watching you on Def Jam, <laughs> then watching you blow up for movie, the movie, the movie, to the whole Rush Hour thing, yeah. and then it was like, poof. Yeah. Where is Chris? I wanted to kind of just, I wanted to do more. That wasn't enough for me, you know, and then I started traveling around the world, seeing a lot of things, just living, and I started enjoying those things because I knew it wasn't just about me anymore. Best way to do that is to step back, live a little bit, yes. and then come back, and I, and I can do whatever I want to do. That's what I basically I did. I was traveling, I was traveling, doing stuff, helping people in Africa, doing all over the place. You know, it seemed risky to people, but once I, they didn't know what I was doing, what right. I was learning, what I was, uh, you know, how I was uh, just building myself as, as growing up as a man. Now, I want to dive right into this. Pierre, I'm going to start with you. You know, Chris Tucker talks about that was a risky move that he made by stepping away. And even in today's time, we know everybody feels that you constantly have to stay relevant because there's always someone new coming up on social media. So, Pierre, let me come to you first. What's your reaction to this? And do you think it was smart for Chris Tucker to pull away to, to make this comeback? I can't say if it's smart or not. It's, it's his choice. I don't know what he was going through internally, emotionally. He might have got really tired of the business. There's maybe some layers in there that he hasn't really spoken about inside the business. I know how the business can be. You know, everybody pulling at you, wanting you to do all kinds of stuff, putting that pressure on you. And sometimes it's greater to just step back for a second. We as fans want more of him, of course. But that's what we want. We're being selfish. We don't know what he's going through in that situation. So to say um, is a smart move, hey, you know, he got all his senses together. You know what I'm saying? We want to see him again. Now, him pulling back is different back then than it is now. Now it's, it's such an appetite for social media that people need to stay relevant all every five seconds. Back then you could pull back and he didn't, you know, it was a different situation. So to me, um, if he's happy and he has a state of mind that he's happy with, he's ready to come back to where he wants to come back. It's his life. It's not our life. So to me saying if it's smart or not, yeah, it's smart to him if he did it. Now we'll find out, you know, with the release of these movies on a situation, it, it was, a, you know, was it a smart business move, but it's first it's about yourself first. You've got to take care of yourself first. Absolutely, and I think we're seeing more artists do that step away because they need to take care of themselves. <laughs> yeah, Monika, let me come to you. What's your reaction to this, and do you think it was a smart move for Chris Tucker to, you know, take that time away from acting? I think um, he had stated that he wanted a larger perspective on life, and stand-up is about people's perspective and living life, you know, and you have to experience. I think that's why sometimes when we have comedians who make it, and then they their problems become very different than the everyday problems, right? They they can no longer relate to their audience or to the world around them. Um, I, I think what he did, if 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 he went to see the world and and saw these different uh, opportunities to experience what other people are experiencing, and he can bring that back to the stand up stage, it'll be great. Um, and um, Listen, I'm I'm I love Chris Tucker. I loved all the movies. I think he was the the character that we saw him in was very young, um, a lot of hypertension. You know, like uh, moving around. You get older, you want to mellow out. You know, and sometimes people need to forget what you've done to see this new person that you're trying to emerge into. So this, this movie Air looks like he is playing a more serious role. And now a new generation of people can see him from this perspective and then go back and see his later works. Absolutely, and I, I don't want to get it mistaken, Marvin, I'm gonna come to you next, but I just want to list some of the roles that he has turned down over over the past years. Um, he turned down Any Given Sunday in 1999, Next Friday, Friday After Next, Black Knight, The Pink Panther, and the list goes on. So mm -hmm. even during that time that he wasn't here, obviously he was still in demand, but Marvin, let me come to you and get your thoughts first. Thank you so much for joining us. We're Thank you for having glad me. to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. But i definitely love to get your reaction to hear from Chris, Tuck Chris Tucker, excuse me, and also do you think it was smart for him to, to step away from movies well he's still a household name everybody knows so I don't think it, it didn't hurt him that bad and then also I 
have a little personal insight to it. I know he's a very religious man. Absolutely. And uh, at one point, he kind of just wanted to step away from the cussing and stuff like that. Because in Rush Hour 2, him and his people went through the script and took out a lot of the cussing. Shout out to Sherman Golden. Uh, but, uh, you know, mental health is mental health. And I, I can't fault nobody for taking a, a break when they need to. You know, living their life the way they want to. And mind expansion. If he wanted to travel and see the world, uh, I think that does good for human development. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of my, my insight into the world is the fact that I've been all over the world and mm -hmm. I've spared things, you know what I'm saying? Be, not, you know, being in the military yeah. when I was in the military. So, hey, big ups to him. Yeah, no, I think, and like Pierre said, we'll see as things continue to roll out. Pierre, speaking of you, I'm coming back. So, you know, Chris Tucker, as, as Marvin mentioned, Chris Tucker is a household name. We mm -hmm. can't deny that. We, you know, he's known for Friday. He's known for um, Rush Hour. And just, I think Yamanika mentioned that animated uh, I guess, characteristics that he adds to his comedy. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what do you think he needs to do to have a successful comeback? I know you said we'll find out in the results as things come, but if there was something you could speak to from a professional standpoint, what do you think he needs to do to make sure that this comeback is successful? Being hit movies. <laughs> that's it. I mean, in the day, that's it. You know, it's, that's, what we, that's what we choose. That's what we pick by. You know, if he's in hit movies, it is. If it's not a hit movie and the movies come out and not hit movies, to us, we'll feel like it's not a success thing that he did, but he can still feel successful if he says, hey, my mentality is where, where it needs to be. Maybe my box office isn't the same. We don't know what the future lies for him. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's kind of cool he's going in a dramatic role way because, you know, to me, the comic can always do comedy, but can you do dramatic stuff? You know, you saw Eddie Murphy doing dramatic stuff. We see Richard Pryor doing it. Or you just seen um, Kevin Hart going into the dramatic roles. I, I kudos to him trying something different. And the only way, not the only way, but sometimes if you leave something, you have to come back different because you don't get a chance to make the same impression. You get what I'm saying? You know, the first impression. So him leaving, for whatever reason he left, come back, he's dramatic now, then we're going to take a different look at him. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? If he came back the same silly way, the first movie's like, you know, this, well, man, goddamn. It would, it, you know what I'm saying? It would be like, okay, that's changed. But he's showing us that he's trying something new and different. So I give him kudos for that. Yeah, one more question for you, Pierre. Now, in, later in the interview, he mentions Friday, right? You know, that's been a big conversation a lot of people have been wanting. Mm -hmm. And he did step away from Friday for religious reasons. Mm -hmm. But do you think Friday is something that he needs to kind of help, uh, I guess, make sure that this is, is successful so that when he comes back, you know, people still feel what they once felt, Pierre? No, no, no. Uh, uh, I, I, I would, me, I wouldn't do it. Um, you know, he don't look the same. You know, it, it ain't the same feel. He don't have the same energy <laughs> as Friday. You know, unless he's going to do Friday, you know, Friday, unless he do Saturday, you know, Friday, you know, where they sit around chilling, just chilling around a, a bingo hall or something, trying to do a heist of a bingo hall. But no, man, him trying to have the same energy, people going to say, mm, let, let, uh, let DC Young Fly do that, okay? Let, let, let DC yeah. Young Fly take this spot for the new one. But Chris can do so many other different things, but I wouldn't do Friday again. It's too big. People, it's too close to people's heart, that movie. And if it don't come out right, they're going to slaughter him. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Chilling came back. That shit ain't funny no more. You don't look the same. So, no, nah, don't do it. He gave you what he gave you. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Yeah, nah, and speaking of DC Young Fly, I think DC Young Fly has been trying to get him to play his dad. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see. But, Marvin, let me bring you in. Same question to you. What do you think uh, Chris Tucker needs to do to make sure that he has a successful comeback? Well, just like you say, he needs to have hits. But I don't want him to do Friday because I am in – fell in love with the character Smokey. He, right. he can't be Smokey like that anymore. <laughs> so don't even try it just like Jay-Z's first album. People want Jay-Z to rap like he did on the first album. It's not going to happen. You, you know, time moves on. So mm. I think if he has successful movies, he'll be successful. But I don't think, I think Smokey's character is done for him. Absolutely. Now, the benefit of having this panel that I have so many professionals, one of those being Yamanika. So let me get your thoughts from the from a, you know, back in perspective, Yamanika. What do you think Chris Tucker needs to do to have a successful comeback? And would you want to see him in another Friday in his comeback? Well, I mean, he's been known for these high energy characters. I earlier I said hypertension and that, that's because I just got my blood work back. But um, it, he's, he plays these high energy characters. Right. And then as you get older, you know, you may not have that same kind of energy. I don't necessarily, I mean, I understand like the character he played on Friday. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to see him do that unless that character has evolved in the script and we are seeing where they are now. Because I mean, there's nothing wrong with seeing a character's evolution, but I mean, I wouldn't even want to see Friday in general. I think they did such a great Damn. job as the people, you know, I'm talking about, I wouldn't want to see a remake of it. 
Sometimes yeah. we go back and we try to do a remake of something and it never has that magic that that cast of characters had. Hopefully this generation can find their own Friday that's not just doing a reboot of Friday. Um, and in terms of like what he needs to do, I mean, like they said, the show, the movie, if the movie is a success and what he is trying to present as a success, then people will go with it. Um, and if it's not, you know, I don't know, but thank God he made a name for himself. And I understand that like when people make, make it early in stand up and it, you know, sometimes it chops their legs and they, they don't grow beyond that point because that's where they made it at. You know, stand up is, is, uh, you know, a career of longevity as well. And as you get older and, you know, you just see more things, you have more conversation to add, you have more perspective to add. Um, it's why it's one of the most truest art forms. You can see someone when they're young, you can see someone when they're old doing it because we all have different perspectives and different things to talk about as we grow. Right. But just like women, just like women do, y'all don't go backwards, boo boo. We don't go backwards, boo boo, like the ladies okay. say all the time. <laughs> so he ain't going backwards either. Okay, I'm done with the back. I'm done with the back. Dude. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't go back with the same dudes y'all dated five years ago, ten years ago. I'm done. So that's how Chris <laughs> Tucker saying he done with the back. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm, de I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now, as you all know, every single Wednesday, we have a live studio audience, and today is no different than the other. We'll give it up. And we get the opportunity to have a live studio audience member ask you all a question. So today we have Marie of Smoky Stallion who's going to ask you all a question. So Marie, thank you for joining us. What's your question? So oftentimes it benefits artists to step away from the spotlight in order to evolve. So my question is, just like Dave Chappelle took a break for different reasons and came back on top, do you think that Kevin Hart needs to take a break from the spotlight in order to come back and maintain his longevity? Hell no. <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a project, uh, me and Ronnie Jordan up under Kevin coming up. Kevin don't need to step away from nothing. Uh, stay where you at, Kevin. Yes, sir. I mean, I, you know, he, he's hot right now. He's popular right now. Uh, you know, uh, in this day and age of uh, internet and social media, keep your pulse, you know what I'm saying? And, and Kevin is across the board. Mm -hmm. He's doing it all. Just same on Shark Tank, he's doing everything. Keep doing what you do. I don't know how he gets the energy, you know what I'm saying? But uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Don't step away from nothing. Get, get that money. Get that bag. No. I mean, unless he wants to, right? It's, it's all, people get, if people get burnt out and they get tired. If he wants to take a break, he got the money to, and then come back. He already established himself. I think sometimes people want to take a break um, before they would establish themselves. So I think he would be fine if he took a break and came back. Good question. Um, hurt him? No. Okay. Is he as hot as he was before? No. Okay. But he was so he he came he became so hot that even his little bit of downness is still hotter than most people. Okay. So if you're selling if you're selling five million you know, 5 million tickets per concert, and now you're selling 2.5 million. That's 2.5 is way more than most people anyway. He was so astronomical. So now that he's maybe waning a little bit, now some people say, I don't like him as much. You know, I used to like him as a boy. He ain't as funny as he used to be. That's all right. He got enough people who still like him and still support him that, that those don't matter. So he could walk away, come back. He still has a core audience. But why should he leave? If he's enjoying himself, why, why leave? You know what I'm saying? He on everything. I had to pull out my driver license to make sure he wasn't on that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> say that. <laughs> he, don't, he don't turn down nothing but his collar. Okay? Okay? <laughs> so everyone can follow Smokey Stallion BBQ on Instagram and also Marie's Cocktails. And you will be able to stay in touch with us. Well, thank you so much, Marie, for joining us. We'll give it up one more time. And as always, a shout out to our sponsor, Smokey Stallion, for this week's viewer spotlight. Every Wednesday, they have Whiskey and Wing Wednesday at Smokey Stallion Barbecue, owned by Cam and CJ Newton. They have 50 cent wings and $5 whiskey all day, every Wednesday. The address is 309 Nelson Street in Atlanta, Georgia. You can check out their hours below. And don't forget to stop by and wash down some of those good wings with a drink of Woodson Whiskey. Right, this is Sir DC, and you're watching Comedy Hype News. I'm in the trap, blues and pop, my rank is high, these hoes is fly, I'm checking my back, I'm thinking the way, I shut it up man, 
Now, before we close out, Yamanika, I'm going to start with you first because, you know, I always love your theme backgrounds and I see the flowers from the trees. So, you know, speaking of flowers, I want to give Chris Tucker some flowers. What's your favorite Chris Tucker moment, thought, memory or movie? You know, whatever it is. What's your what's your favorite Chris Tucker moment you can share? I really uh, fell in love with Chris Tucker in Fifth Element, actually. And um, I know, you know, it, it, the character, he just brought so much life to it. And it, um, it, there's so many like quotable moments, but I really, I really enjoyed him with that. And that's when we also were able to see that, you know, cause he was alongside Bruce Willis. So, you know, to see him hold his own against somebody uh, that was at that caliber at the time uh, was really amazing. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Pierre, I'm coming to you. What's your favorite Chris Tucker moment, memory, or anything that comes to mind when you think of Chris Tucker? I'll tell you a funny story. He was a young comic. Um, I was in LA. He was at the bus stop on Sunset. And I'm driving by. I said, what the hell? And, you know, he didn't have, he didn't have a car back then. And so I took him to the comedy store, performed. He said, could, I, could you give me a ride back home? I lived, in, I lived not too far from him. I said, all right. So I took him back home. He lived in Hollywood, like kind of toward the hills with an apartment. We go in there and all I saw was an empty room. I could see the reflection of a, another room, like a bedroom, you know, with lights on. But there was a what do you call it? Sleeping bag, a pillow, a lamp, some books on the, on the floor in the corner. And I was like, who the hell sleep? You know, I'm thinking he sleeps in a room, another room. I was like, so who the hell sleep that right there? Like, That's mine. I said, what? Because he was sleeping with a, he was staying with a guy named Maestro Clark, another comedian named Maestro Clark, had the one bedroom. Chris was on the floor in a sleeping bag. Chris yeah. now can buy that whole damn apartment, okay? And I was like, damn, you're in that little room. I'll always remember that, you know, one of the fond memories of being, a, you know, young Chris Tucker was just, you know, I took him that. But, and also he beat me out of the role. He took the role from Jack, me from Jackie Brown. I pretty much had it, but then Big Bang took Little Bank and he said he wants the role. And then the director was like, Quentin Tarantino was like, give it to him. Damn you, light skinned nigga. I was like, damn, man, damn. <laughs> so I'm always gonna remember that Jackie Brown role. And shit. <laughs> never, never forget it. I was gonna bring it up. I love it. Last and certainly not least, our wonderful guest, Marvin. When you think of Chris Tucker, what's a thought, moment, memory that comes to mind? Well, Friday is my favorite comedy of all time. Absolutely. And, and I think it was released in 95, 96. It was released the same weekend that Crimson Tide with Denzel was released. I was at a drive-in theater. I watched it, and I was blown away so much to where I waited, came back, turned the car around <laughs> after I looked at another one, and watched it again. I watched it, like, back-to-back. Um, and then fast forward, we moved to Atlanta to be able to perform in front of him and help him thinking I was hilarious. It meant everything. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no. And definitely congratulations to Chris Tucker for all the accomplishments he's had and mm. the ones that are coming because we know they're going to come. Mm. My favorite one, I would definitely say Friday. My family and I, mm. we sit and we'll rewatch Friday. And know every oh, word. I know every line. Every, every line. And never get tired of it. Every line. Never get tired of it. Mm. So yeah, Friday is definitely and can't forget about rush hour. That's another one, too. But Friday is definitely top top of the list for me. Now, of course, before we head out, I like to know what you have going on. So I'm going to start with our guests because they're in studio with me. Not, you know, calling in Pierre. Yamanika, we're still waiting to get you here in Atlanta. But I'm Pierre, there. <laughs> you were, you were. Marvin, what do you have coming up? And of course, how can people keep up with all the things you well, have going you on? Can, you, can, you can keep up with me at Comedian Marvin H1. Comedian Marvin H1 on Instagram and, uh, and TikTok and Marvin Hunter's fan page on Facebook. I have a book that I'm writing. I was in the military 20 years in Navy. It's military sea stories, you know what I'm saying? A lot of more inappropriate to tell on air in front of, you know, the impressionable minds. But I'm writing a book and I'm also on tour with Ricky Smiley all over the country. Absolutely. And thank you again for coming. We thank appreciate you for having, having you. Mm -hmm. Pierre, I'm coming over to you. What do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? First of all, congrats, uh, uh, kudos to Marvin for being in the Navy. I didn't know he was a seaman, but um, okay, we'll go with that. Um, uh, here's what it is. Uh, <laughs> but also, you knew he was going to start. <laughs> but what? I mean, the same. Congrats, man. I appreciate this, you know, your, your, your contribution, you know. It, it was nothing, but, you know, to you, but it's, it means a lot to us. All right. So uh, what I you can reach me at Comic Pierre C O M I C P I E R R E. Um, 
that's really that's really all I got, man. Right now, just uh, I got a couple of shows coming up, but we'll talk about it each other each and every other week. Again, um, this week my guest on uh, PS Panic Room is the lovely Marseille Martin from Blackish. She drops the dime. She talks about a lot of stuff. Uh, very interesting young lady, man. So I hope y'all watch it over there on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. Absolutely. Now, Yamanika, I don't know why I went to Pierre next, knowing he was going to start some trouble. The queen goes I'm last. Gonna... The queen goes last. Right. I'm going to come to Yamanika to close us out. Yamanika, what do you have coming up? Yeah, and of course, of course, how can people follow you? Yeah, well, you know, we're just wrapping up. I Hopefully... I only got a couple more, tour, you know, uh, filming dates because Homegirl is hired. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Marvin for being here with us today. What a blessing. And added to the commentary here. That's so great. And, and Pierre, uh, you know, my brother, <laughs> just just misbehaving as always. No, no. Shenanigans. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> The lovely uh, and talented Symphony, and uh, and Marie too, who asked the question, and I, I didn't, uh, I and I noticed she said go to Marie's cocktail. So somebody need to send me that because I definitely need to get some cocktails. I get some cocktails for Marie. Um, I I will be performing as, as uh, Phase on Love said at the bum ass uh, fat black <laughs> pussy cat. <laughs> <laughs> and comedy seller this weekend. But if you want to see me the following week, I will be in Chicago performing uh, at Zany's, their new location in Rosemont. So if you want to come there and see me and uh, have a good time, I'd be more than happy to have you guys uh, come and hang out with me. And that's all. And you can catch me everything at Yamanika. Absolutely. As always, I appreciate you all for chiming in on this topic and also to our live studio audience. Thank you for joining us. And if you're watching us and you're in Atlanta, Georgia, you can join us every Wednesday right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Just click the link below and it'll send you right all the information that you need. But as far as on this topic, you heard from us. Now we want it from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts of Chris Tucker finally revealing why he left Hollywood? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Put it in the comments. Drink that black on positivity water. <laughs> Want your brand or business featured right here on the Comedy Hype News Show? Well, you can email us at partnerships at comedyhype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson.